look like, okay? So after this step now, we're going to generate, okay, uh, like a, a template for what those infinitely many solutions are. So this is where we were, okay? Now, what you do is the following. We still have to write, um, we still have to write a solution for this, right? So, you know, X, Y, Z. So what you do is, we're, you just put in Z for Z, okay? Like we, all, we always do it in terms of Z. Then you have to use equation two or three, right? Why two or three? Because they're identical. Okay, so use equation two or three. What does that tell you? Y plus three Z equals three, right? So Y plus three Z equals three. Solve that one for Y, because look, I have something in the Z spot. Now I need something in the Y spot. So solve this one for Y, and we get three minus 3z, that goes here in the y spot. Now I'm going to use both of these into equation 1 and come up with something for the x, right? So now use equation 1. Okay, that's a Grayson 1 there. That's right. Okay, so x plus 2y hey plus z equals 8 okay so let's solve this for x now so this is x plus 6 minus 6z plus z equals 8 x minus what is that 5z equals 2 x equals 5z plus 2 right so here I put that 2 plus 5z. It doesn't matter what order you put it. Okay? So that now is a template for all of the solutions um, for this. So remember we said this has infinitely many solutions, and now I can generate them. So for example, when z is 0, then I can figure out an x and a y. When z is 1, I can figure out an x and a y. So for every single value of z, I can figure out a corresponding x and a y. So with that, I can generate every single one of those infinitely many solutions that satisfy this system. Okay? Yes? So it's always z that you keep? Always z that you keep. It's always in terms of z. Z wins. Okay? All right. Any questions? So when you do have an infinitely many solutions, you have to write down... Um, that solution. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Let's put this in um, matrix form, 2, 3, minus 1, 1. Okay, 1, 2, 1, 8. All right, that's the augmented matrix. So first I want to get rid of this. So I'm going to do, um, okay, so look, you can do row 2 minus row 3, or you could do row 3 minus row 2. Now look, me personally, Mrs. Malikin, if I was doing this, I would do row 3 minus row 2. Why would I do that? Because then I don't get negative numbers, I just get positive numbers. Does it really make a difference? Not in the least bit. Okay, so let's do row 3 minus row 2. Yeah, Ben? So when you do row 3 minus row 2, just Yes, because that's the one you're changing. You, okay, you decide what row you're changing. You combine that with any other row and replace it. So it then does come out with like whatever the next row is. No, it doesn't, exactly. That's the whole point. Okay. Now, in the same um, step, I also want to get rid of this. Okay, but I can't do the same operation now. I have to do like a different set of two. Two R2 minus R1. Okay, so two R2 minus R1. 
So that'll be 2 minus 3, negative 4 plus 1. What is that? 10 minus 1, 9. And then here I have 2, 3 minus 1, 1. Okay, what do you notice? <clears throat> so look at what I have here. 2, 3, negative 1, 1. If I divide row 2 by negative 1, then I get 0, 1, 3, 9. And then here I have 0, 1, 3, 3. Okay, how is this different from the previous one? These three are the same, but their constants are different. That is a no solution. Okay, why is it a no solution? Because if I now, for another step, if I were to do, let's say, row 2, yeah, if I were to do row 2 minus row 3, then I get 0, 0, 0, 3, right? Implying 0 equals 3, and when is that ever possible? Never. So that's a no solution. And again, you can figure it out at this step. When the 3 coefficients are the same, but the constants are different, you can already figure out that it's no solution. And when it's no solution, it's no solution. That's it. You're done. Okay? Cool? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yali. <laughs> Yes, constant for it to be infinitely many solutions. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at this one. So um, I have 1, negative 1, 1, 3. Uh, okay, so... Um, okay, so to put it into a row echelon form, right, we're going to start with this one. So I'm going to do um, 2R2 plus R3. So that's 0, 1, 1, and 12. Okay. All right, next... Let's get rid of this one. I want to do R1 plus R2. So 0, 1, 0, 5. Okay. And then 1, negative 1, 1, 3. So look at this situation. You've already solved this now, right? Because you already have a row where you can figure out one of your variables. This one here, the second row, tells you y equals 5. And then you can plug it into this one and so on. So for the purposes of solving, if you're not required to first put it into row echelon form, you're done. You can continue from here. You can solve it. You're done. However, if you are also required to put it into row echelon form, then you're not done. You also have to continue and make this first red one a zero. Am I making sense? Okay, so that you guys know how to do. Now, if it's just for solving purposes, let's just from here continue and solve this. So from that second row, I know that y equals five. Plug it into the third row, y plus z equals 12, so z is 7. Second row, 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals 5. Write this out, 0x, 1y, 0z equals 5. Right? Write it out. Um, and then <clears throat> going back to the first, x minus y plus z equals 3, so x minus 5 plus 7, x is 1. So we get 1, 5, 7. Okay. Now, I want to tell you guys one other thing. 
Okay, let's go back here. Okay, let's go back here to this one, okay? Let me erase this so it's more, okay. This is definitely in row echelon form, okay? Now, we were able to solve this matrix from here because we know that Z is one and then you can do back substitution and get it. Now, there is also an additional method. This is row echelon form. You could go further and put it into reduced row echelon form. Reduced row echelon form. What that does is you basically continue that same process, but now you make this a zero, this a zero, and that a zero, okay? So what you end up with is just ones here, zeros everywhere else, and then when you have that, that is your solution. So a matrix in reduced row echelon form will look like this. You'll have one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. And then here you'll have your constants. Let's say it's negative two, five, seven. Okay. This matrix is in reduced row echelon form. And from here, you can just tell that X is negative two, Y is five, Z is seven. Okay, I'm not going to make you do that because the point is to put it into row echelon form, learn the process, be able to solve. However, in the future, when you take linear algebra, my favorite course in the world, by the way, like the, I love linear algebra. This is like an important thing. Okay, we're going to kind of use this later as well. Not necessarily, no, because it's always like this is x, this is y, this is z. How, like, if you, you know how, like, this is given to you in x, y, z? If you mess up the order here and you decided you're going to make it like, you know, 2y minus x minus 3z, then like, that's like a rebellious thing. <laughs> but we usually go in alphabetical order. Yep. Uh, yeah. 